So uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends. Uh, welcome to the Asian Civilizations Museum and uh, welcome to our talk today. Uh, today's talk is part of the Pagoda Odyssey talk series held in conjunction with our current special exhibition, Pagoda Odyssey 1915 from Shanghai to San Francisco. Uh, if you have visited the exhibition, please let me know how you feel, what you think about it. If you haven't, I would urge you to go now. Today we close at 9. <coughs> um, so uh, at this time, I would also like to thank the Kwan Im Tang, uh, Kwan Im Tang Ho Chu Temple for the generous support at, uh, for the exhibition and the talk. So uh, the talk today is titled Lofty Towers and the Cosmic Axis the history, form, and symbolism of Chinese pagodas. And I am proud, uh, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce our speaker today, Professor Ho Pui Bing from the National University of Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my fault. So, um, Professor Ho is the UNESCO Chair on Architectural Heritage Conservation and Management in Asia at NUS. Uh, with nearly 30 years of experience in academia, he is a leading expert in architectural history and conservation with his main focus on Buddhist architecture and ritual, uh, rituals of medieval China. And uh, before joining NUS in 2017, he was a professor of architecture at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, where he also served as director of the School of Architecture and University Dean, University Dean of Students. Uh, I'm not going to list all the academic achievements of Professor Ho, but that's one thing I want to draw your attention to. Uh, in addition, being a distinguished scholar, uh, Professor Ho is a conservation consultant and architect, uh, having advised on around 100 conservation projects in Singapore and Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, as the talk today suggests, uh, Dr. Ho, uh, Professor Ho is going to share with us his insights about the evolution of the, uh, and the significance of the Chinese pagodas as spiritual and cultural symbols. And so without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Ho on stage to share with us his insights today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Kevin, for the kind uh, introduction, and thank you, the uh, ACM, for inviting me to give this uh, talk. Um, this talk obviously is uh, given in conjunction with the uh, Pagoda Odyssey exhibition. Let me have a seat. And um, if you have not seen it, as Kevin said, you should go. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, exhibition. It's actually a very, very uh, unusual, very unique collection of uh, models of pagodas. And so my talk, uh, in conjunction with that, is really uh, not necessarily on the models themselves, but really the background, the uh, symbolism, uh, so that we can have a better understanding of the uh, context uh, of the building of uh, pagodas uh, in Buddhist uh, China. So all the way down the centuries. Uh, <coughs> And we know that Buddhism came from uh, India. Uh, the southern route obviously take, take us uh, down to uh, uh, um, Sri Lanka and from Sri Lanka to, uh, to, to Myanmar and down to, uh, to Singapore. Uh, but mainly uh, the northern routes. Uh, there's, no, there's no point here? Oh, yeah. Okay. The northern routes uh, will take us, uh, oh, I can't see. Yeah. The northern road take us from uh, the birthplace of uh, the Buddha around the Himalaya, uh, uh, foot of the Himalaya, and up this way through uh, the northeast western part, through uh, Tassila, which is Pakistan. And uh, there are two routes. One, the purple one, that uh, takes you through uh, the, uh, the the passes uh, into uh, uh, Kar uh, Karakoram Pass into Khotan. And the other route uh, up uh, uh, Samarkand or sometimes uh, up the uh, Afghanistan. So all the way up into uh, the uh, uh, Tian San uh, uh, mountain range, uh, several routes, uh, one to the north of the uh, Takamakan Desert, uh, down to Dunhuang, and then down the Hersey Corridor into... Uh, okay, thanks. Yeah, now down, yeah, that's very good. 
down Hesi Corridor into the capital of uh, China at that time, uh, Chang'an, uh, and further up to uh, Korea, and uh, from Korea to Japan, uh, or uh, later in the 8th century, uh, from uh, six, the 7th century from, uh, from ch China itself, uh, through Lingbo and other places into, uh, 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 into Japan, into, into uh, Kyushu, and then up to, uh, to Nara or Kyoto. Right. So that's uh, roughly the kind of routes that we see uh, uh, moving uh, through this uh, uh, land. Now this uh, probably, uh, uh, I, I, I don't like to use the word uh, Silk Road, um, but more uh, a kind of trade routes uh, or routes. Uh, the routes are taking uh, goods. Uh, maybe uh, when you talk about route, you, you think of uh, a very long uh, road, uh, but it is not. I mean, they are all s small section of routes uh, uh, go going from one city to another city and for trading, for uh, many, many other activities, including uh, the, uh, the travel of uh, Buddhist ideas and other religious ideas uh, from India, from other parts of uh, uh, Central Asia into China. And so uh, when we look at the beginning of uh, pagoda or pagoda building uh, or even monastery, uh, monastic uh, building, uh, we probably need to trace back uh, to uh, what the origin, uh, which is India. And uh, when you see India, the, one of the earliest uh, surviving uh, uh, stupa or uh, pagoda, I will come to that later on, uh, is the great stupa of uh, uh, Shanxi. Uh, there are three major stupas. Uh, this one is the biggest one uh, in, in, in Bhopal, near Bhopal, built by the, uh, the, the, uh, the king uh, Ashoka. Now, Ashoka uh, is a very important person in Buddhism, uh, living around the 3rd century BCE. Uh, he actually brought Buddhism into focus, made Buddhism into a state religion and, uh, and creating uh, the whole sets of uh, rituals and uh, doctrines, uh, everything about uh, the life of the Buddha as well as the way to worship the Buddha. And so uh, in those days, uh, uh, this would be a center for Buddhist uh, practices. And uh, the stupa was built uh, uh, around uh, the 3rd century uh, uh, BCE, but the, uh, the, the surrounding uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the gates, the four uh, Toranas, uh, as well as the surrounding uh, Vedika, uh, those were built uh, slightly later, around uh, first century uh, CE. And uh, here I have a, uh, a very simple shape of the uh, stupa, the earlier stupa. Uh, so you need to notice that uh, the gates and the, uh, and the railing uh, is important to keep the stupa sacred. Right? So this demark demarcates uh, the sacred from the profane. Uh, and so uh, 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 you have to keep uh, uh, clean within the compound. And uh, inside the stupa, the main uh, uh, idea is to have this uh, hemispherical uh, dome, uh, which is known as anda. And then on top of anda, you have the hamika and then the chatri. Right? So these are the major components of a stupa uh, during the time of uh, uh, Ashoka. Now, when you come to... Uh, uh, China, um, uh, as I said, the first uh, place of entry is uh, uh, Dunhuang, uh, because at that time in the Han Dynasty, uh, Dunhuang is probably the uh, westernmost uh, uh, city uh, in the Chinese territory. Um, and uh, both in the Han and the Tang Dynasty, all the way from the second uh, to the eighth century, uh, that is the uh, that's a gateway of uh, China towards the, the west. And in Dunhuang, uh, you have... Uh, the cave, uh, Mogao, Mogao caves, that has uh, more than 492 uh, uh, painted caves in there. And in this particular cave, uh, cave uh, 14H, dating to about 745 or 46, uh, it's, uh, it's a very big cave of, uh, uh, of uh, Buddha uh, in Nirvana, meaning that Buddha uh, uh, passing away. So the Nirvana, uh, the Buddha uh, entering into Nirvana or final extinction of desire. And so uh, uh, in the cave itself, apart from the Buddha uh, in the Nirvana pose, uh, you have a painting at the back uh, showing the uh, uh, different illustration, different aspects of Mahaparinirvana uh, Sutra. And in the uh, Parinirvana Sutra, uh, you have major eight stages uh, uh, of the death of the, uh, of the Buddha, uh, but the, the, the second from the last would be the dividing 
of his uh, sarira, uh, meaning his uh, remains or the uh, sarira uh, uh, in Chinese uh, Li. And uh, it's, uh, it's this that is really important because this is a remain after the cremation uh, of the Buddha. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, uh, kings uh, and, uh, and, and nobilities uh, coming from around uh, the states uh, to come and to share uh, the Sarilas. And after sharing the Sarilas, uh, they built a stupa. Now, obviously, this was uh, painted in the mid 8th century, and so you can see the stupa in the Chinese form. Uh, so it is very, very different from the one that we saw uh, in Sanchi. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you can also see the uh, very small, uh, 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 you, you, you can see the pointer, right? Yeah, you can see the hamika over here and then the chatri uh, up over here, right? So uh, this portion is very similar. Uh, to the one we see over here, right? The hamika and the chatri. And so uh, uh, the form at the bottom may be different, uh, but the top uh, would be quite similar. And so it's all building this uh, pagoda. And uh, in India itself, uh, the same uh, cult of uh, stupa continued uh, in a lot of cave temples. Uh, this is one in uh, Ajanta, uh, and you can see in Ajanta, and uh, Ka this is Ajanta, this is Kali. Uh, you have uh, the cave temple for worship, and, uh, and it's almost a, a very, very grand, uh, almost like a cathedral. And at the end of the uh, uh, long, elongated space, you have the stupa. Right? And the stupa in the very similar form with the hemispherical under, and then you have the uh, hamika and the uh, chatri. Uh, with this sort of umbrella form. And this is an honorific kind of symbol uh, for someone who died and uh, cremated with the remains uh, kept inside the uh, under. Right? And so it is like a funerary memorial. Right? And, uh, and you can see that um, it's uh, not only used for Buddhist uh, 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 people, but also for uh, and, uh, nobility, for kings, and, uh, and uh, the people of high places. So it's a common form. And uh, uh, the way to worship it is to go around it, uh, circumambulating the stupa by going around it in a clockwise direction three times. Right? That's one way of uh, uh, worshipping the Buddha. Now you see that in this particular case, which was from the... Uh, uh, from the 3rd century uh, BCE, uh, it's a very, very pure uh, hemispherical shape. But uh, when it comes to around uh, 50 to 70 CE and the 5th century in uh, Amaravati, um, you see an image of the Buddha uh, painted or, or sculpted right in front of the, uh, of the stupa. And so by the time of the 1st century BCE, CE, uh, you get the shift from uh, worshipping the Buddha in his image rather than just the stupa without the image. And so it is the, the kind of uh, uh, the, the boundary between uh, what we call the Hinayana or uh, Theravada Buddhism uh, from the Mahayana Buddhism. It's also uh, going from a iconic worship of the Buddha to iconic worship. And so you can see this uh, divide uh, and quite clearly in the uh, uh, cave temples in, uh, in uh, India. And when it comes over to uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, Silk Route, uh, in, uh, say in Xinjiang, uh, you have uh, uh, various uh, cities. This is the city of Jiaohe, uh, which uh, was, uh, there was a very big uh, monastery built around the 7th century along a central axis. And in the center or at the back of the monastery, you have a gigantic stupa, right? A person is about that tall. It's gigantic stupa right in the middle, a big one with a very big uh, compound. Right? Then obviously there are other sites with a smaller stupa like this one here. So why do people build stu uh, pagodas or stupas? Now in the um, in a very, um, uh, even though it says uh, 680, uh, it might not be uh, from, uh, from the Tang Dynasty, this particular sutra, uh, which is merit gains from uh, constructing uh, uh, pagodas, uh, in the preface to that uh, particular uh, sutra, it says the term of Ta is, uh, is from Sanskrit, and uh, it can be translated as a tomb, uh, whether it's a square or round, 
and efforts have been spent in shaping it, uh, uh, whether it's well carved or, or maybe plain, and the decoration can be very different. And there will be relics and images and scriptures housed inside the tar. Uh, in another uh, work, which is uh, more trustworthy, uh, Fa Yuan Zuling, or Dharma Garden and Pearl Forest, written in 717 by Dao Shi, uh, a chapter on respecting the uh, pagoda says that uh, the Buddha leaves this image to the world. Now, the Buddha is probably more the ideas, uh, the, uh, the philosophy, the ideology, uh, but he was asked, uh, after your nirvana, after your uh, parinirvana, uh, what will happen? We have no image uh, to worship. And so very kindly, uh, the Buddha said, oh, maybe you can worship my, my pagoda or my stupa. Uh, and so a stupa can, uh, can, uh, can be a form of worship and as well as images. So, Taiyong uh, Lingsang uh, in Liu Si Ku. So, you can have spiritual mountains uh, rising up like a, like a pagoda or uh, shadows, but, but statues left in the cave temple. And then uh, this particular uh, text, uh, which is almost like an encyclopedia of Buddhism, the first encyclopedia uh, from uh, uh, the 8th century, uh, says that, uh, well, the so called Ta has many translations. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and many people don't understand what they mean, but they actually meant the same thing. And uh, so ta uh, is uh, in Sanskrit stupa, uh, which is equivalent to spirit temple in this land, or ling miao, uh, where is ling miao? Yeah, over here. Uh, meaning that it's, uh, it's, when we look at a temple, uh, uh, temple in the early Chinese means image. And so it's a spiritual image being left behind. And so, uh, uh, so it's, uh, 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 Miao doesn't mean, I mean, we all know Miao, right? Uh, Miao doesn't mean uh, a temple, right? It was a later use, utilization of the word to mean a temple, an architecture. Uh, but Miao in the earliest uh, usage is image, right? So uh, after you pass away, that image is called Miao. And so uh, when emperor passed away, his title is called Miao Hao, uh, the, the title of the Miao after he passed away. And so uh, uh, Ling Miao, meaning that uh, Miao, Miao is a Mao Ye, right? It's, it's just an image. And so it is a, uh, a spiritual temple, a spirit temple. Uh, it's not spiritual temple, it's spirit temple. So the spirit of the deceased, uh, the temple is in this uh, Miao, and it's also in this uh, Stupa. And, uh, and uh, uh, Dao Si went on to say that Anta Yo San Yi, uh, meaning there are three purposes. One is to commemorate an important person, and the other one to allow others to believe and to repay blessing received. And so a lot of this has been uh, uh, the reason why some of these pagodas were built, uh, because of this, uh, uh, this three uh, reason. But further on, um, uh, it is in many places, uh, uh, especially in this particular sutra, uh, the merits from gaining constructing of uh, pagodas, um, Anyone who built a stupa uh, as, uh, with, uh, with the sarila as small as the amalaka, amalaka is like a, like a small uh, 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 fruit, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's almost like a, like a small apple or, or, or li, uh, a small, small peach. And the amalaka, amalaka uh, after the nirvana of the Buddha, his merit would be more than tens and thousands of times or maybe unquantifiable, uh, and so uh, the merits gain from building the pagoda is very similar to the merit gain from building up the image uh, of the Buddha or building up the temple itself. And so gaining merit was the most important uh, feature of a, of a pagoda. And so uh, um, in, uh, in, another, uh, in, in this other uh, text, it says that you can build a pagoda to house the relics of the Buddha or sacred scriptures, and you shall gain merits like a Brahma uh, beings, and you can be reborn in the Brahma's uh, uh, heaven. So uh, in, in Buddhism, there are several heavens, and so you can be born, reborn into that heaven. And so it's all reincarnation. Uh, you don't have to be uh, going through the reincarnation cycle, but you can be reborn into the heaven. And so uh, the merit is important, and gaining merit uh, is the topmost uh, priority. Now, obviously, not everybody can build a pagoda. Not everybody can sponsor a big temple like Guan Yingming or Guan Ning Tang, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's too big, right? So you can uh, contribute part of it and that would be sufficient uh, uh, as a kind of merit. So these are the three main purposes according to uh, Dao Si 
uh, in Farian Zuling uh, for memo memorial, for merits, and for national well-being. Uh, and so you have uh, equivalent uh, pagoda, the Sarila Stupa or pagoda, the funerary pagodas, uh, the Gongde for merits, uh, uh, as well as for protecting the nation or praying for the protection of nation. And uh, one particular emperor in the Sui dynasty, uh, the first emperor of the Sui dynasty, uh, Sui Wenti, uh, actually did a uh, very, very similar uh, uh, act as uh, King Ashoka. King Ashoka, uh, remember you see the piles of uh, Sarila in that uh, illustration. And uh, King Ashoka is said to have uh, dispatched uh, his people to build 84,000 stupa. Right? And some of them about 19 of them, uh, depending on who counts them, uh, landed in China. And so uh, he was divide the Sarila that he had and sent it out to 84,000 places to build stupa. Right? And so its Sarila stupa was sent out by King Ashoka in 3rd century BCE. And so uh, in, uh, in an act to follow uh, King Ashoka, uh, uh, Sui Wenti, uh, the, uh, the, the first emperor of the Sui dynasty, uh, in between 601 and 604, sent out Sarila in three uh, dispatches uh, to 113 prefecture of China to build a pagoda. Right? And uh, he would want all the pagoda to be built in the same manner, which is a wooden pagoda, about seven story or nine story, but most likely seven stories, and uh, built at the same time. So he would synchronize the watch. So the first time was 30 pagoda. The same time, bam, you start building, right? It's fantastic. Uh, uh, it's, it's a very wonderful mega project, I think. Um, but he was doing, that, doing this for his own uh, uh, satisfaction because he has all this Sarila. Uh, and so uh, he said that this is one uh, text uh, that uh, remained to, to, to this day. Most, uh, all the pagoda had, uh, has already disappeared, but this one has a, a, a text uh, written from that period. And, uh, and this is for Gongde, and so that everyone, all sentient being in the four direction and, uh, and above and below, will be able to uh, uh, <coughs> go to, uh, to, to achieve the uh, final enlightenment. Right? And so uh, it's for, for everyone. This is said to be one of those, uh, but obviously this is not. Uh, this was built uh, much later in the 10th century uh, in Nanjing, uh, in uh, Xixia Shi. Uh, really a beautiful uh, 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 stone pagoda and, uh, and you can see uh, all the sculptures uh, up here as well as panels in here uh, to show the story of the Buddha including the story of the Buddha's uh, cremation as well as uh, uh, the building of the stupa. Uh, the same way uh, Shomu, uh, Emperor Shomu in uh, Japan uh, did the same thing. Uh, in uh, 741, uh, he uh, wanted uh, many, many uh, uh, of his prefectures or uh, Zhou to have a, uh, a, 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 a monastery built. Uh, it's called Kokubunji. And uh, all the Kokubunji will be built with a stupa, with a, with a, with a pagoda. And uh, this one is in uh, Todaiji, uh, which is a, the, the, the head uh, uh, Kokubunji. Uh, it's, uh, it's about seven story. Uh, tall, about 100 meters. But this one was rebuilt many times. Uh, this is from 1820 in uh, Hida, uh, up in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Takayama. And uh, this is uh, three-story, uh, only 22 meters. And so uh, that is the very, very clear idea of uh, building Buddha, uh, a pagoda for gaining merits. Right? Uh, but as we can see, pagodas are almost like... Um, a, a tall structure uh, in a traditional city or town like this place, uh, Zhending. And uh, um, uh, this is my picture from uh, 1988, many, 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 many years ago, uh, when I was standing on this platform here, taking a picture of the pagodas. There were four pagodas in this uh, city, all ancient pagodas, some pretty tall, 40 meters, this one. Uh, this is a model in our exhibition here. Uh, and, uh, and some of this, like, uh, like this too, would be about 50 meters tall. And you can see that the uh, landscape uh, in traditional China is only one story building, right? And so all the pagodas will be like very tall, right? It's almost like when you go back to medieval Europe, all the cities would have all these uh, tall spires from the churches and the cathedrals, right? And so uh, the second motive to allow people to believe in Buddhism 
it's because of this uh, wonderful architecture. Uh, it stood out, right? Uh, uh, and it's, as you can see here, uh, even in 1988, uh, there, there's no high rises here, right? And so the pagoda stood out uh, um, in the in the landscape, and therefore it's one way to tell people that yes, there's a there's a monastery here, and it's one way for you to believe in. And then obviously a uh, funerary pagoda. Uh, this one is in Santong, uh, in uh, uh, in in the place not far from Jinan, and uh, it has an inscription on here. And uh, it's, it's also for, uh, to build this uh, pagoda for the country, as well as for uh, uh, the master, uh, the monks, uh, the father, the mother, and for all the sentient beings in the, in the world. Right? So it is for them, uh, uh, you put the money in, uh, you sponsor the building of this pagoda, even though it's a very small one, uh, but it is uh, uh, an expression uh, that you care for everyone's uh, well-being so that they, became, they can be, be, be reborn into uh, the paradise. And this one uh, is a very uh, famous uh, calligraphy of uh, uh, Su Dongbo or uh, Su Si uh, in 1087 uh, in the Song Dynasty. Uh, he went past this particular uh, prefecture and, uh, and he, uh, he, he had uh, uh, some uh, serilla, and there is this uh, pagoda that has no serilla, and so he donated his serilla to, uh, to the monastery and to the pagoda, and, uh, and written this uh, uh, supposedly uh, from, his, uh, from his own uh, calligraphy. It's a very beautiful calligraphy uh, of the Song Dynasty of uh, Su Dongpo. And this one I particularly like because uh, no one knows about this one. Uh, this is a monk that I study. Uh, up on uh, Wutai Mountain, and uh, in Wutai Mountain, Wutai Shan, uh, he was responsible of building bronze buildings, right? Very amazing, right? Bronze buildings. He built four bronze buildings, uh, front bronze halls, uh, on the four sacred mountains uh, in, in uh, Ermei, Wutai, uh, Jiuhua, and then uh, in uh, Putuo. And uh, so the four major uh, uh, Buddhist mountains, uh, he built the bronze building. But he himself, was buried in the in the uh, uh, quite quite a tall. It's about fifteen meters tall, um, or even more, maybe twenty meters tall uh, pagoda, just outside this uh, temple where he built this uh, this uh, uh, particular bronze uh, building. And uh, but this is quite late. Uh, but I'm very interested in this pagoda because uh, even though it's built uh, with bricks, uh, you see uh, the brackets. Uh, uh, all the supporting uh, cobbles and uh, and rafters, as if it is a timber building. Right? So it's five stories, uh, and uh, it's all in bricks. Uh, that's the opening in the front here, and uh, and you have a smaller opening like this, but they are all fake openings, and uh, and but you also have a decoration between the bracket uh, sets. And so in timber buildings, the bracket set is to support the roof or the eaves, and so uh, you need that. And uh, you imitate that in bricks, right? But obviously, this is not the first time uh, this has been uh, uh, done. Uh, you can see a lot of this in uh, brick building, brick pagoda, uh, as well as brick uh, uh, tombs or mausoleum uh, in, uh, uh, since the Song Dynasty, right? Since um, 9th century, 8th century, uh, 10th century. So if we look at pagoda uh, uh, in time, uh, we can see that uh, uh, it sort of developed uh, over a very, very long period of time. And, uh, um, uh, but I, I want to refer back to uh, the Dharma Garden and Pearl Forest, uh, in which uh, the encyclopedia said, uh, when you build the pagoda, uh, you build uh, four niches in the four directions. Uh, on the surface of the pagoda, it is proper to make color paintings in the forms of lions, birds, and other animals. And on the inside, or maybe outside, uh, you can hang banners and canopy. Right? And so uh, it's, a, it's a very clear instruction of how you decorate uh, the pagoda. Right? Um, and so uh, if we look back into physical evidence, uh, all the physical evidence that we have are not freestanding uh, pagodas, but uh, in the cave temples. Because in the cave temples, we have 
earlier uh, remaining, uh, um, um, say, uh, uh, pagodas or images of the pagodas. And this one is in uh, Dunhuang, again, the westernmost uh, cave temples in uh, China, uh, which was excavated uh, between about uh, 350 to uh, uh, 1,200, 1,300, over 1,000 years. And 492 caves were decorated. And this one is from the early 6th century, from the Northern Way period. And uh, inside you have the central pillar. Right? And uh, it's usually called the pillar of pagoda, the central pagoda pillar. pillar right? Zhong Xing Ta Zhu. And uh, I have a, my, my first uh, academic paper is on this particular pillar. <laughs> this particular one, right? like 40 years ago, <laughs> 40, 40 something years ago. Right? And, uh, and uh, I, I argue about this being a pagoda uh, because of the niches, remember? Uh, niches on the four sides. So you have the niche here and the niches on all four sides. And you have a Buddha sitting here. This is uh, Maitreya Buddha, the Buddha of uh, the future, sitting cross leg. Right? So the legs are crossed over here. And then you have uh, heavenly paintings up here. You have Apsaras up here, the uh, Fei Tian, and uh, all the Apsaras up here, uh, as well as uh, many other decorations above. Uh, but it is uh, uh, a supporting element of the stupa, uh, oh, sorry, of the cave interior, but at the same time, a, uh, a, 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 a stupa-like. And even in this particular cave, uh, there is a painting of the Mahasafa Jataka, uh, which is uh, on the left side or on the uh, east, on the north side uh, of the of the cave. Uh, uh, yeah, on the north wall of the cave. From the same time, you see the pagoda being painted here. Uh, this is a pagoda built for the prince who, were, who was very very compassionate and uh, saw a hungry tigress uh, who uh, so were so hungry that uh, he offered himself to die, jump, going up a mountain, jump down and lie down here, and the tigress uh, eating his flesh. And after he passed away, his uh, brothers and, uh, and, uh, and parents built a pagoda for him. And it's a three-story pagoda from the northern uh, way period, uh, early 6th century, uh, with niches as well, and uh, with um, the hamika and the chatri, as well as the banner coming down. Right? So the form is very, very uh, 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 fixed already at this time. I'll have you uh, more, more evidence of that. But there's also another type of pagoda uh, in the late 6th century, uh, which has uh, four corner towers. And we have one of that uh, in, in, in our exhibition. Uh, and, uh, and then there's a more Chinese form. And then you have the anda as well, the hamika and the chatri, right, with the banner coming down. Right. So all the right elements of an Indian pagoda can be found here together with the Chinese elements. So this looks like a Chinese building with uh, columns coming down, three bays, and the roof. Right? And so it's uh, Chinese and Indian elements. And when you go to uh, Yungang uh, caves in uh, Pingcheng or Da Tong today, uh, you have many, many caves, many examples. And uh, this one uh, uh, from cave one and two, they are probably from uh, 483, 85. Uh, they were considered the late caves uh, of Pingchen. And, uh, and you have uh, uh, in the shape of a pagoda, but not so clear, but this one is very clear, uh, cave number two, uh, where you have uh, architectural elements. So these are all the elements that you see uh, in an actual building. And remember this, because I'm going to show you this again in, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a pagoda. And then you have uh, the roof uh, eaves, uh, this is three layers, one, two, three. Uh, use it to, to support the roof of the cave itself, but also as a uh, pagoda. Uh, but much earlier on, uh, probably in cave 11 and 12, uh, about 5th century, early 5th century, uh, you have actual pagoda images. And uh, you can see seven-story pagodas like this uh, with uh, the same uh, hamika and chatri and the banners, and then the, uh, the eaves. Uh, and, and by now you can tell, right, all these uh, different Buddhas uh, uh, sitting or, or standing uh, in the niches uh, from different levels. And some of them are even more uh, uh, three-dimensional, like this one here, supported by a white elephant uh, and, uh, and three, uh, three niches all together. Uh, and this one is also very clear. So by this time, uh, the 5th century, uh, probably 400 
and 60, 65, 70. Uh, Yungang was uh, first started in 460. And so by this time, you have a lot of these uh, caves already. And, um, and then you have uh, uh, a sixth century uh, a representation in Yungang, uh, much later in Cave 39. And in Dunhuang, Cave 323, uh, from a story of a very famous monk, uh, Fo Tu Ten, uh, Fo Tu Ten, uh, showing off his, uh, his uh, miraculous skill uh, by listening to the bell on the pagoda, he can tell fortune. He can tell who, who will win the presidential election in America right? <laughs> by listening to the bell. Right? And uh, he's said to be uh, living in China around the 3rd uh, to 4th century uh, CE. Uh, but obviously, this painting was much later. Uh, but you can see a very full-fledged wooden pagoda already. So, uh, Yang Shichen uh, 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 painted or, or uh, uh, drawn this uh, particular evolution uh, of the pagoda uh, of all the uh, very famous uh, pagodas in, uh, uh, in China. Uh, but the earliest uh, uh, pagoda dated to 520 is this pagoda, Songyue Si Ta, uh, in uh, Songshan. Uh, Songyue Si, uh, Songyue is the mountain song. Uh, in the middle of uh, China. Uh, it's considered to be the central mountain of China in Henan province. And uh, it is a pagoda built uh, by the emperor after he moved his capital to, uh, I mean, yeah, not, not really exactly after, but uh, uh, they moved the capital to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to Luoyang uh, from Da Tong around 5, 510, 515. And so, uh, so this was built in 520 as a pagoda uh, in the Songyue Monastery. Uh, uh, I, uh, when, I, when I saw the pagoda, it was under renovation, so I have to take this picture from the internet. Uh, but it's in a very, very beautiful spot. Uh, it's, uh, it's a fantastic uh, pagoda because uh, it's 12-sided, uh, very unique. Right? So uh, to me, it's an imitation of a circular pagoda. Right? Remember in the text, it says uh, either square or circular. And in Shanxi, in uh, India, it's circular. And so it is an uh, imitation as close as possible to a circular uh, uh, structure, 12-sided, uh, 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 with uh, 13 uh, uh, levels, and each level has these uh, bricks built uh, for uh, imitating the roof. And so sometimes uh, later we call it mi yan si, or it's a very close eve type of uh, pagoda. Uh, there is a very tall section down below. Uh, people were wondering what this might be. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a clue maybe later on. Uh, but up there, you have niches as well. And in, in each niche, I suppose uh, in the past, you have uh, uh, Buddhist uh, sculptures in there, as well as some animals uh, in the niches as well. But this was not the only pagoda that they built uh, in the new capital near Luoyang. Uh, in Luoyang itself, they built a Yongning Si pagoda uh, right in the south of the, uh, of the capital city, uh, south of the palace itself. And um, in the northern uh, capital of Pingchen, or Da Tong today, uh, the Northern Wei emperors uh, forbid pagoda to be built inside the city wall until probably around uh, 460, 480. And uh, at that time, there was only one pagoda built inside, which is uh, Yongning Si Pagoda. This one is the one in Luoyang, not the one in Da Tong. And, uh, but this one was built by uh, Empress Dao Wei Zhe Hu. And you know, I mean, uh, uh, females are all powerful, right? So I'm looking towards uh, uh, Kamala uh, Harris. Right? Females are all powerful. So Empress Dao Wei are the most powerful person, right? Not the, not, not the Empress. And she can muscle all this money and resources to build this pagoda, reportedly about 300 meters tall. What is the tallest building in Singapore? Anyone? Gokul Tower. How tall is Gokul Tower? About 300 meters. 294, that's right. Very exact. <laughs> Are you an engineer or architect? <laughs> yeah, exactly 394. 294. But this is said to be 300 meters tall. Ten, uh, nine story together with the uh, spire, 
uh, the Chatri and the, and the uh, uh, Hamika. It's 300 meters tall with about uh, nine bays altogether. And, uh, and this is the excavation site. Uh, it's, about, uh, uh, it's about 10 meters around, uh, across, no, sorry, uh, 100 meters across, yes. 100 meters across, and then you have the central uh, uh, pillar sitting on this uh, foundation all the way up from the bottom to the top. Right? So that's the wooden pagoda of 516. And it was uh, recorded uh, by an eyewitness uh, who wrote a, uh, a description of uh, Luoyang's uh, monasteries uh, in 540. By the time of 540, the pagoda was burned down. And the ashes burned for three months, he said. Uh, unfortunately, it was burned down. Uh, there was a lot of warfare during that time. Uh, but it was a very, very tall and impressive pagoda of nice story. Now, uh, I don't think it's as tall as 300 meters, probably about uh, 147 meters, 150 meters in my, in my calculation, according to the slanderless ratio, right? 300 meters, I mean, building a Gogo Tower 1,500 years ago in wood, amazing, right? Uh, no, probably about 150, but still, right? It's half the height of Gogo Tower. And uh, uh, the, in the excavation, they found uh, many uh, sculptures like this uh, Buddha face and uh, some of these uh, small images. And these are very small, tiny, about that size, right? So it's almost like in this uh, particular cave, uh, 288, uh, in uh, about the same time uh, on, uh, uh, or slightly later, you have these uh, sculptures uh, stuck to the wall of the pagoda, inside or outside, right? So may, may, maybe some of this, but very, very beautiful, very, very graceful uh, images uh, from this particular pagoda. Now, the Sui emperors uh, following on uh, in the uh, early 7th century, uh, especially the first Sui emperor, was a devout uh, Buddhist. Uh, but he was also responsible for the building of Chang'an, the greatest city in, uh, in the world at that time. Uh, well, a, a huge city, uh, uh, divided into 108 wards, and uh, and in all this, the, the palaces are uh, up uh, in the north, and uh, and in this particular city, later the Tang Dynasty inherited it, and some of the pagoda that we all know of, the Da Yan Pagoda, the Xiao Yan Pagoda, and so on, can be found all within the city itself. Uh, but uh, I want to say the two pagodas that uh, that he built, one uh, Da Zhuang Yan Si Pagoda was built for his wife. Uh, the empress after she passed away uh, over here. And uh, the other one, Da Zhong Si Pagoda, on the opposite side, uh, next to each other, uh, uh, is a pagoda built by his son uh, when he passed away. So the first emperor and the second emperor, the first emperor uh, built this pagoda for his wife and the second emperor built this pagoda for his father. Right? So both are the same, identical, about 100 meters tall in wood. And this pagoda stands for a long time. Right? even until uh, the end of the Tang Dynasty. And uh, I'll tell this story in the next lecture, actually. Right? So uh, more sorry about this particular part. And I, it's really amazing because I was uh, looking for this pagoda and I found this. Right? This was even before they built a garden around it. And I found a mound and I found the remains of the pagoda. And now it's called Muta Si. The area is called Muta Si. And Muta meaning this wooden pagoda. Right? And so, uh, so it's, a, it's a fantastic. So very far away from uh, the city itself, uh, the current city wall here, uh, uh, the gates over here, this is at the far corner. So the form of the pagodas. Uh, some can be quite, uh, quite small. Uh, some of the early pagodas are really quite important pagodas uh, in the uh, uh, Shandong province. Uh, some of this uh, near Jinan, uh, the uh, Longfu Ta, the Simen Ta, or the Jiu Ding Ta. So these are the pagodas uh, Longhu because, I mean, they don't know what, to, what, what they are. So Longhu meaning there's a dragon and tiger uh, in the decoration here. Uh, Simen because there are four gates. Jiu uh, Ding because there's nine pagodas on top here. Right? So it's very literal. Right? But they are, they are uh, amazing examples of uh, different periods from 611 to the 7th century, late 7th century. This one is, uh, is really very pure. Right? So instead of the round pagoda, you have the square pagoda, but you have also uh, somehow the anda, uh, the hamika, and the chatri. Right? So now you can remember all these words, right? <laughs> Stupa, Sanskrit, right? Anda, right? Uh, hamika, 
Chatri, right? Okay, so those are, those are the words. But this one is one that I also study, uh, which is uh, Ling Yan Si uh, near uh, Jinan as well. Uh, it is also uh, uh, partly in, uh, in, the, in the exhibition itself. Uh, it's a, it's a um, um, brick pagoda uh, uh, in the Song Dynasty. And uh, uh, I, I like it because, not because of the shape of the pagoda, uh, which is quite, uh, quite unique. The lower three level, you have uh, double eaves, right? One, two, one, two, one, two. And then above, uh, the, uh, the four levels above or uh, five levels above, you have the uh, uh, single eaves or six levels above. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six levels above, you have a single eaves, right? Uh, and Ning Yansu is a very important uh, 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 site uh, in China, uh, uh, very uh, very sacred in a way. Uh, but the below the pagoda, you have about twenty calf, uh, twenty something calf panels, wooden uh, stone panels of uh, the story of King Ashoka. Remember, I told you that King Ashoka was very important uh, monarch king uh, for Buddhism right? uh, in, in India. And there are many stories of King Ashoka in China. And some of this uh, uh, pagoda is also named after the, after the king, King Ashoka Pagoda, because they believe that the Sarila uh, uh, happened, the Sali uh, that was retained uh, uh, inside the pagoda uh, was from King Ashoka. But it's very unusual. This was the first one that I come across uh, to have the story of King Ashoka in panels like this uh, all around. And, uh, and this one is particularly nice, the Buddha uh, facing a, a very young uh, boy and, uh, and uh, sort of praying uh, to the Buddha over here. And, uh, and, and uh, he, he, uh, he, he actually, I mean, this, this story I can, I can tell again. So, so the next lecture I will I'll tell more of this, uh, this sort of stories. Uh, but it's uh, because, uh, because I will talk about uh, Pagoda for other purposes. But, but this is a wonderful, uh, I mean, I, I want to mention it now because uh, it's almost like the Pope coming to Singapore, right? Uh, and, uh, and all the children are gathering around him. And so, so it's a wonderful depiction. It was buried for a long time. So no one saw this. You can see the, the carving to be very sharp. Uh, it was buried under earth until about uh, 30, 40 years ago when they excavated it, they saw these panels. Right? So I can tell you the story next time, uh, uh, so, so all the 20-something the panels. Then obviously you have funerary pagodas uh, in Shaolin Temple as well as Ling Yan Temple. Uh, really very, very nice. Uh, but in, uh, uh, in, the, in terms of form, uh, the square form is definitely quite, uh, quite important. And uh, the square form, either in bricks or in uh, wood. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of wooden pagoda left, uh, not very early. Uh, but most of the pagoda that uh, we have are from the, uh, uh, in, from the Tang Dynasty onwards are in bricks. Uh, but in bricks, they imitate uh, the form of a wooden building. Right? So you, have, you see the subdivision and all that. Now this is the more famous uh, pagoda that uh, everyone uh, going to Xi'an would see, the Da Yan Pagoda, because uh, it's associated with the greatest monk in Chinese Buddhism, Xianzang. Uh, that's part of the story of uh, Si Yu Zi and part of that uh, story of this uh, latest game from China, Wukong, right? So it's all part of that, that, that sort of story, right? But it's, uh, it's very important because uh, Xianzang uh, we went to uh, uh, India and stayed in India for 13 years, came back to China, brought together a lot of text, uh, scriptures, and images. Right? Uh, the reason why he went to China, uh, sorry, went to India was because uh, he, he sneaked out. He, he was an illegal uh, migrant right? uh, because uh, at that time the border was closed. He could not have gone out. So he sneaked out of the border of China to go on this long journey to India and came back victorious with a lot of scripture. The reason why, in the 7th century, he felt that there's not enough scripture, original scripture in China. So you don't get the right teaching of the Buddha. And so he went all the way to Nananda, the Buddhist monast uh, uh, university at that time, and brought and, and taught there, learned there and taught there, and brought back a lot of scriptures. And in the uh, year 652, he petitioned uh, the emperor to build a pagoda inside the monastery that the emperor gave him, which is uh, Da Ci And Da Ci was, at that time, the site 
for translating scripture. So he said, I want to build a pagoda to house the scripture that I brought back. Right? Yeah, I'm thinking about my book collection, right? So maybe I should build a pagoda to, <laughs> to, to house my book collection. To house a collection of scripture that he brought back. And he purposely said that it has to be a Western Sia style. And so what we see here is actually not that style. The style of Western Sia would be something like this, according to him, right? And uh, it's very, very similar to some of the uh, structure that you see uh, in our Indian temple, uh, as well as in, uh, in Bodh Gaya in, uh, in India. Uh, and it went through four transformations in four different time periods. So what we see at the end is from the Ming Dynasty. Right? So I tell people not to go to this uh, pagoda, even though it's so famous. Yeah, because what you see is a very late pagoda. Except if you see uh, through the opening, it's a very, very, uh, very, very deep, uh, deep uh, uh, brickwork. You see this on the lintel. This is from the Tang Dynasty. This is probably from his time. You can see the Buddha preaching in the Buddhist hall, and uh, you can see the architectural hall from the Tang Dynasty. On the uh, west side uh, of the stupa, of the pagoda, uh, in, in the lintel over the, the gates. So it's one of this probably. And this got buried inside a subsequent uh, pagoda. Right? Fantastic. This is also one that I really love, uh, which is uh, again in, uh, in a place, this is my own uh, picture from uh, 1988 uh, when I was traveling in, uh, in China. Uh, this is also on the Song Mountain. Beautiful sights. I mean, the, the mountain is so wonderful with all the, all the rocks and so on. But the brick pagoda here, it's, uh, it's, it's, it has this uh, very, very beautiful parabolic shape. Can you see that? Yeah, with this uh, eaves projecting out and so on. And then you can see that the gate or uh, the door is here, but then there's this big area with all these uh, six uh, uh, sockets. What are they? So if you look into our exhibition uh, in, uh, in one of the uh, pagoda that was built for Bao uh, Si in Nanjing, uh, sorry, in Suzhou, this one is in Suzhou, uh, you see the, at the bottom you have this uh, larger eaves than those at the, at the top. So I believe that there will be wooden structure coming out of here, like a skirt. Right? You, know, you see the barrelina, the skirts around the, uh, the body where the, you have this, uh, this uh, roof or the, this sort of roof going around it. Because remember I said the way to worship the, uh, the, the, the stupa or the pagoda is by circumambulation. So one way of circumambulation is to circumambulate the pagoda at the bottom here, three times. And so you, you have to have this for circumambulation. Right. This is uh, uh, San Dao, which is uh, also a monk that I study a lot uh, from uh, uh, in the south of uh, Xi'an. Beautiful uh, pagoda, uh, brick pagoda as well, with this uh, timber uh, construction. This is a slightly different form of brick pagoda from the Liao dynasty. So this is uh, from uh, Jurchen, uh, 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 another sort of tribe coming down from the, from the north. Uh, and uh, one is near uh, Fangshan, which is near uh, Beijing. This one is also near Beijing on the, on the east and west side of Beijing. And uh, it has the uh, kind of a Chinese uh, pagoda form with the Chinese eaves and bracket system, but then more the Tibetan kind of form where you have the anda, the hamika, and then the chachi. Right? And uh, this is a truly uh, Liao dynasty uh, pagoda. Uh, and you have uh, that pagoda in our exhibition, uh, Tianning Si Pagoda from the, uh, uh, from near Beijing uh, from uh, 1119. Uh, Again, a very compact uh, eaves form, uh, but the decorations are all here. Uh, this is an image uh, uh, taken uh, uh, on, the, on the facade itself. And uh, you can, I mean, uh, some of these are my images. Uh, I mean, most, most of these are my images, uh, uh, but this was taken quite a long time ago. And so uh, it was so translated from slides to, 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 to digital. And so it's slightly, uh, slightly uh, faded. Uh, but you can see very similar kind of uh, dragons coming down the columns, as well as uh, Bodhisattva on the side, or even the, uh, uh, the Vajapani on the other side. And then the decorations like this happening in the, in the lintel. Right. Now, uh, the earliest uh, surviving uh, wooden pagoda would be one in uh, Holyuji uh, uh, in East Asia. 
and uh, this one's probably eighth century pagoda. Uh, in Holuji, which is the most important uh, monastery uh, of uh, uh, of uh, Japanese Buddhism, uh, one of the earliest, uh, with the pagoda and the golden hall side by side in the central compound. And the pagoda has uh, five stories. This one was added later, uh, again, so that you can do circuit emulation. Uh, but uh, before that, it's just five eaves. Um, and there is a central column all the way down. You can see that, right? So it's a very early kind of uh, uh, um, uh, construction method with a central column. This was in uh, 1943 uh, 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 reconstruction, and you can see the central column going down. Right? And remember, I asked you to re uh, remember the brackets. So some of these brackets are very, very similar to those that we see in the Northern Way, because uh, this pagoda came via the route from Korea. China, Korea, into Japan. And so it has the uh, earlier kind of architectural decoration and structural system. And so you can see that. And then you have this central pillar. And then at the bottom, you cannot go up to the top of the pagoda. You can only go around the bottom of the pagoda, which is here. And uh, in the bottom of the pagoda, there are four sculptures. Uh, uh, sculptural uh, compositions and the, the four sculptural compositions relates to the life of the Buddha uh, including one for the uh, separation of Sarila uh, the Nirvana over here and then the, uh, the coffin the, uh, the separation of Sarina, uh, the Sarira and so you, you can go circumambulate and you can see the story of the Buddha until his uh, cremation and they have a lot of this uh, five story, three story or seven story pagoda uh, and then the wooden pagoda in, uh, in, in, in China, uh, this one from uh, uh, Hangzhou, Liu Hata, which I will talk more about. Uh, I'm running out of time, actually. Uh, so this is uh, Holuji, uh, one golden hall and one pagoda. And uh, this is uh, Xiao Yan Ta, which is Da Jian Fu Si. It's also an imperial pagoda, uh, pagoda. And the pagoda is right at the end, right? Along a central axis. So one pagoda at the end. And uh, this is a... Uh, Beautiful illustration of a uh, sutra written by Dao Xuan in uh, 667, uh, uh, it's, uh, I, mean, I, I don't want to translate the name because it's really quite long, but it's an illustration of Jatavana Vihara uh, in India. Although Dao Xuan had never been there, but he described Jatavana uh, as a proper way of building a, uh, a, a monastery. And in the central Buddha cloister over here, he said that you have uh, uh, the central axis, you have all the gates, the outer, the middle gate, uh, the, the first gate, and then he has the central pagoda, seven story in the middle, right? along the central axis. Right? Now this, uh, this uh, drawing was done in uh, 1057 or 11 something, uh, 11th century, uh, and so it's reflecting uh, the scripture, uh, but he said that there is a pagoda in the middle, right? A central pagoda. But most of the other pagodas that you see in uh, Tosho Daiji, for example, was built by Ganjin, the uh, Chinese monk, uh, has two pagodas, east and west, uh, east and west pagoda, and a lot of twin pagodas, including this one in Suzhou, which also we have in the exhibition, and this one in Quanzhou. Most of us come from uh, southern Fujian. Uh, these two pagodas from uh, uh, Quanzhou, we also have uh, models of, uh, from the uh, end of uh, Southern Song. And you can see uh, these are uh, uh, stone pagoda, very unusual, uh, because they, we have a lot of stone in, uh, in Fujian. And, uh, and they, they are not pear, but somehow they become a uh, pair because they were built uh, not as a pair pagoda. Uh, the real pair pagodas would be something like this one here in Yakushichi. Uh, unfortunately, uh, all the buildings are gone except this eastern pagoda. Uh, and the western pagoda over here was uh, rebuilt as well as the main Buddha hall. was built in 710. And uh, this is the main pagoda. Again, you have this central axis, that the uh, central uh, column that goes all the way up. Uh, like the Yongning Si Pagoda, and, uh, 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 but uh, three eaves, uh, major eaves, and three subsidiary eaves. And uh, I have the opportunity to witness um, the dismantling of the pagoda. Uh, uh, they did that for 10 years before they built it back again. And uh, you can see uh, the stones of the, uh, of the columns, uh, the column bases, and then in the middle is this uh, big base over here, which is for the central column. So this is rebuilding again, 
and uh, they will they will they will watch the they build a whole uh, whole structure uh, uh, around the pagoda for ten years uh, so that they can do the reconstruction. Right, so you can see the central pillar, uh, but all the floors cannot be uh, accessed except for the lower floor. So. Can I have 10 more minutes? If you need to go, you go. I, I know we are supposed to be up to 8, uh, eight o'clock. Uh, but this 10 minutes is about the symbolism, and, uh, which is something that I really uh, uh, want, to, want to bring across. Uh, the symbolism of the pagoda, uh, there are many, many speculations, especially for the Anda. Uh, as I said, it is uh, where uh, the Buddhist uh, relics are housed inside the uh, dome, the hemispherical dome. And uh, because of that, uh, this particular stupa uh, received this uh, blessing, but also this significance uh, from housing uh, the Buddha's uh, relics. And thereby, a lot of scholars would say, uh, the power of the Buddha. And so the enlightenment power of the Buddha is housed within this hemispherical shape. Right? And uh, so uh, it is, uh, uh, anda means egg, right? Ji dan, right? Means egg, uh, not, not necessarily ji, but dan, right? So egg. And the egg uh, is where you have the cosmic power within the egg, right? And so uh, the cosmic power of the Buddha is housed inside the egg, and, uh, and that power can be transmitted to the world. And so worshipping the Buddha and worshipping the stupa uh, is like worshipping this uh, uh, hidden power inside the anda, inside the egg. And uh, the chatra and the, and the stick in the middle uh, means the uh, cosmic axis coming down. Right? And so in the wooden pagoda that we saw in Yongningsi or in, uh, uh, in, in Holyuji, where you have the central pillar coming down, that is also an imitation of the central axis. That might be required for the construction, right? the structure, because such a tall pagoda. Right? Uh, but it's necessary also a symbolism of this central cosmic axis that goes up. And so, uh, so you can see the axis going up. And then the different part of the pagoda, this is a, a Tibetan form, uh, but still uh, very different uh, parts and different shapes, different colors and different meaning. Uh, but the symbolism is also because uh, it houses the relics of the uh, Buddha. And this is one that we have in our exhibition uh, from Farmen Si. This was before they take it down. Uh, it was uh, half broken for a long time due to earthquake. And, uh, and this was rebuilt. Uh, so this was when, when, when I saw it, uh, rebuilt uh, in 1988. And uh, what happened was when they took out the pagoda itself, they found an underground chamber. And the underground chamber, uh, which is down below here, is no, known as Di Gong, the underground palace. And so supposedly in all pagodas, you have the underground chamber, the middle chamber, and the top chamber the three palaces. Uh, but so far, we have found quite a few of these uh, underground chambers. And this one is most spectacular because uh, it was one of the earliest to be found. And uh, it's, uh, it's full record. So it's at the bottom here. So this is the pathway going down to uh, the middle section and the, 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 the end section over here. And they found many objects like this, uh, which is the stupa. And, uh, and this one, the finger bones of the Buddha, is found housed inside this, oh sorry, inside this particular stupa or, 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 or maybe pavilion in here, which is this one here, housed inside this, 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 this. Like, like a Russian door, right? One into another, right? And finally, this finger bone, right? And this is known as the true body of the Buddha. Why? Because the finger bone, I don't know, how, 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 how big is our finger bone? How tall? One inch, one slightly more than one inch. This is more than two inches, inches, right? And we say that Buddha's measurement is twice our, our measurement, human's measurement. And so the finger bone is that, that, that high. Actually, they found four finger bones, three true bones, one fake bones. I mean, they start doing a lot of fake stuff all the way back in the Tang Dynasty <laughs> in China, right? So one fake bones, just in case that they're stolen, but three actual bone, right? Bone structure. And, but this is very, very important because of the true body of the Buddha. And so over 200 years, this particular bones will be sent 
to the capital city, Chang'an. This is to the west of Chang'an, about 300, 200 kilometers away, or maybe less, but around there. Right? Sent to Chang'an on a big parade with eight emperors welcoming the Sarila, the uh, true body of the Buddha, into the city. Parade around, shown in major monastery in the capital city and go back. Why do they want to do that? Why did the emperor want to do that? Most of the time, the emperor was about to die. <laughs> they were so sick. So they say, bring the Sarila over. They have to do it once every 30 years. Right? Every 30 years. And so all the time when the Buddha finger came to the capital city, after the emperor saw it, he died. Right? In at least three out of the eight emperors died straight after <laughs> seeing the Buddha. So I don't know whether it's good or bad, but, but beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, objects that are uh, found in this uh, Farman Si. So the symbolism of this pagoda is really representing the true body of the Buddha. Right? Uh, the, the, the symbolism over here. But the last uh, example I want to show you is one that I really like. Uh, it's the uh, 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 wooden pagoda of Ying Xian. Uh, this one is not in our exhibition. Uh, because uh, this is very, very remote uh, in Sanxi province. Uh, so remote that very few people have seen it. And so it, it was only the recent time that we, we come across this particular pagoda. But it was built in 1056, the Liao period, 67 meters tall. Right? Uh, that is about 20 story tall. I don't know whether some of you stay in, uh, on 20, 20th floor. It's about that tall all in wood. So this is the earliest wooden pagoda left in China. And uh, it has uh, 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 nine, nine sections, uh, sorry, uh, seven, uh, seven sections of the, of the eaves, uh, five, five eaves, but the nine, nine sections of this, uh, this uh, bracket set. But inside there are five stories, five stories. And uh, you look at the bracket sets, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, all the different brackets being used. And uh, sorry, this is a friend of mine, a furniture collector. Um, he, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big uh, balcony on the outside. Uh, you, now, none of this, you cannot do this, right? No, they, they are not allowing people to go out. But you can see, it's on the on the northern part of China. It's all flat, and this 67 meters tall pagoda standing like a thumb, uh, like a like a finger in this flat land. Very, very beautiful. So there are three ways of circumambulating the pagoda. One along the outer corridor, another one on the inside, another one next to the altar itself. Look at the beautiful uh, 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 brackets and then the top uh, finial. It has five levels, as I said. Uh, these are some of my uh, uh, the, uh, photographs. So you can do the outer one, the middle one, and the one inside. So there are five, uh, five levels, and each level you have different uh, Buddhas. This is at the very bottom. Uh, this is seven Buddhas of the past and Shakyamuni uh, in the middle. Shakyamuni is the last of the seven Buddhas, and the six are drawn uh, uh, on the wall itself. And uh, on top of uh, Shakyamuni is this particular uh, 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 cobble ceiling with uh, brackets over around. And uh, this is one of the uh, 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 seven Buddhas, uh, Kanaka Muni. Uh, uh, drawn very, very beautifully, and uh, some of the uh, writing over here to identify the uh, name of the Buddha. And uh, look at the detail of the, uh, of the painting about a thousand years ago. Uh, this is the hand of the Buddha, and uh, this is an apsara, a uh, feitian, like an angel coming down uh, 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 from, the, uh, from the top right corner of the particular uh, Buddha. Image. This is the second level with uh, Shakyamuni, uh, the Buddha, uh, the historical Buddha, uh, with two uh, attendants. Uh, why it's Shakyamuni? Because of this uh, uh, mudra, the hand gesture of touching the ground, and that's always uh, Shakyamuni. And then you have the uh, Manjushri and uh, and Samantha Bhatra, uh, Manjushri on this side, Samantha Bhatra on that side, uh, Wen Su Pu Xian, uh, by the look of the lion over here and the elephant over here. Uh, so this is uh, this is from 1962 uh, book. Uh, this is uh, taken more recently. And the third level is uh, five uh, Tathagata, uh, five uh, uh, Buddha of the uh, uh, Vajradhatu uh, Mandala. This is uh, more the esoteric uh, uh, Buddha or esoteric uh, beliefs. Uh, again, you can tell by the hand gesture and the animals over here. So uh, as I said, one circumambulation on the outside, 
second in the, in the inner corridor, third around the altar itself. And then you can see the animals uh, uh, coming out of the uh, base of the Buddha. The fourth story uh, is the three sages of Avatar Saka uh, Sutra, Hua Yan. Uh, Avatar uh, Saka Sutra is a very, very important sutra of Mahayana Buddhism. And so uh, it's uh, also a, a, a particular uh, sutra uh, that uh, many, many major monasteries uh, believe in. And so uh, this one is uh, Vairochana, uh, the Buddha, the cosmic Buddha, with a manchester uh, on the uh, lion and Samantha Bhadra on elephant. And then uh, you can see the uh, bracket sets, the two levels here. Uh, uh, and you can see the, uh, the changes, right? This is 19, 1962. Uh, this image is the, uh, pers the, 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 the youth uh, drawing the, uh, uh, the elephant. Uh, somehow the elephant is a bit skinny, but anyway, uh, this one is very, very different. Uh, so this is uh, more recent. And the last uh, level is the Mandela, a uh, calling to a very important uh, Dharani, which is uh, Ushni Savijaya Dharani. Uh, uh, it is a Dharani for praying for future uh, peace and uh, blessing. And so it is a very, very popular Dharani uh, for uh, recitation, right? recitation. And so you, you recite the, the Dharani and you are able to gain uh, all, the, uh, all, the, all the blessings. So we have uh, Vairochana in the middle and the eight uh, Bodhisattva on the side. Uh, and again, you have this uh, beautiful thing. And one author, uh, uh, Kim uh, Yongmi, uh, compared this to another uh, Dharani uh, uh, depiction with Vairochana and the eight uh, Bodhisattva uh, together with this one here, uh, about the same period of time. And so the five story with uh, the seven Buddhas of the past and Shakyamuni, with Shakyamuni and Samantha Bhadra and Manjushri, with the five Tathagatas of, uh, of the esoteric uh, Vasra Datu Mandala, and then the three sages of Avatam Saka, and then the final one, which is also part of the Avatam Saka uh, Sutra, which is the Ushni, uh, Ushni Savijaya uh, Dharani. And so it's like uh, five different stages of practices so that when you get to the top, uh, you really are able to almost go into heaven and uh, praying uh, this Dharani will allow you to be part, the blessing of the rebirth into the uh, paradise of the Buddha. Right? So it is a kind of uh, iconographic journey layering one on top of the other. And it's very, very unusual. Right? It's the only one that we uh, uh, ever found uh, uh, to this day. And so uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, uh, visiting this uh, uh, pagoda uh, time and time again. And, uh, and that's really very, very fantastic. But there's also the other side. The normal people will say that this is almost like heaven, right? Uh, heavenly uh, palaces and so on. So there's also this uh, cosmic axis aspect. Even though there's no central pillar, uh, it's almost like a cosmic axis because of the height of this uh, uh, tall structure uh, of the pagoda. Uh, as you can see in this uh, uh, internet uh, uh, image. So it's all flat, but this one might stick out. And that is the symbolism of the Buddha. So I'm sorry for the late uh, finishing. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Professor Ho, for this wonderful talk. Um, I mean, when you are giving a talk, when you are like um, going, taking us all through China to visit all these, to show us all these wonderful pagodas, I mean, it reminds me kind of like why we call this exhibition Pagoda Odyssey. Uh, we are hoping to bring our visitors all over China. But at the same time, in this lecture, you share with us, I mean, not just pagodas from different places in China, but also your experience, your own Odyssey with Chinese architecture. And also, uh, thanks for this detailed uh, uh, analysis of the Yingxian Muta, because this is, as you mentioned, this is one of the most important, uh, important pagodas in China, but not in our collection. The reason, because it was only, the, uh, Professor Ho mentioned that as well, it was only became uh, noticed or identified in the 1930s, and our collection was made in the 19, uh, early 1910s. So, um, yeah, but thanks very much for completing the exhibition with your wonderful talk. So I think we still have some time. <laughs> and I think we can take uh, maybe three questions. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, yes. Yes, 
Hi, Professor Ho. Um, I have two questions. Um, number one is, is there a process whereby the pagoda form a uh, change from an Indian style to a Chinese style? And then number two, um, uh, what is the role of a pagoda in water such as um, lake and ponds? I think the first question is still uh, is still uh, uh, being debated. Uh, uh, obviously, Yang Sichuan mentioned that uh, it's a stupa form together with the multi-story uh, 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 structure in traditional Chinese uh, wooden architecture. Right? You see some of this uh, in early early period around the, the Han Dynasty, uh, but but really it's very hard to bring the two together. And so I think basically it's uh, uh, building up the uh, wooden uh, uh, structure like uh, like what we call story pavilions or, or tower uh, with this uh, with this top uh, on uh, with this particular uh, 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 really very interesting uh, uh, hamika and all that uh, put on top and this uh, chachia yeah so uh, so it's very very hard to say uh, but I think uh, the multi story is uh, is a form that uh, that was developed. Uh, uh, maybe uh, the other one would be like uh, Shenzhang uh, coming back from Nananda and uh, wanting to imitate some of the uh, pagoda or the uh, the structure that that, that he saw uh, in India. So uh, there's no uh, real conclusion to that. Uh, water and pagoda, uh, no, not really, no no relation. Uh, but uh, in the yeah, in ne next slide will be the advertisement for the next lecture. Uh, uh, in the next lecture, I will talk a bit about uh, Feng Shui Pagoda. Uh, then that will be will be something relating to to water as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's regarding the number of story of the pagoda. Uh, is there any reason why they only built in odd number stories and, yeah. and not yeah. uh, even? Yeah. Yeah. The, also, the seven story pagoda seems to be has more significance than that because there is a Chinese saying that Shen Zhao Qi Ji Fo Tu. Why not? or <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, the, thanks for pointing this out because uh, I, I love it, uh, not spoken. Uh, the, uh, uh, the odd numbers in Chinese uh, numerology uh, refers to yang number, not the yin number, yin and yang. And so yang number means uh, 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 numbers that's uh, uh, one, three, five. And so um, a lot of architectures are based on yang number. Uh, so in the yin yang, so yang is more uh, more 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 macho, more uh, uh, that that that's that sort of uh, idea. And so for example, the building is like a, uh, one bay, uh, three bay, five bay, seven nine bays, and the emperor has nine bays. Uh, in most of the earlier pagoda, it's nine story. That's the top, right? And uh, uh, when I did my research on uh, medieval Chinese architecture uh, from the Tang Dynasty. Uh, like from the 7th century to the 9th century, when I tabulated the pagoda, uh, there seems to be uh, a kind of hierarchy. The emperor can build up to nine level. No one else can build up to nine levels. And so uh, Yongning Sita and the, uh, and the two pagodas from uh, Sui Dynasty, they were all nine stories. Right? And that's the emperor's. Uh, but people lower down will be seven or five. Five is actually quite common. Right. Uh, so I was saying maybe Qi Qi Fu Tu is just uh, taking in between, uh, but there's always the, uh, the the hierarchy, especially in the Tang Dynasty that I studied. Right. So five, three, five, we common people can build. Seven, high official, then nine, emperor. Right. So that's the last one. Okay, yeah, I think the last one, yeah. Can I just ask why some of them curl up and some don't? Oh, I see. Well, that, that's part of uh, Chinese architecture style. And uh, uh, in the south, uh, the eaves uh, curve up a bit more. In the north, uh, it's usually more straight. Yeah, so, so it's quite a simple, simple, simple phenomenon. So when you see Suzhou and further south, you see more uh, uh, upturned eaves. And uh, further north, uh, more straight. Yep. Good. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks again, Professor Ho, for thank this you. wonderful talk. Uh,
Yeah. And uh, yeah, the next talk also by Professor Ho about the legends and representatives in Chinese pagoda, Chinese pagoda. I hope to see you there. They will be on the 8th of October, 2024. And uh, I would also like to thank Kwan Yam Tang uh, Ho Chu Temple again for the support of this exhibition and also the talk series. So uh, thank you very much for coming and I hope to see you in our next events. Thank you. Oh, sorry, uh, we see you. Uh, okay, we also appreciate your feedbacks. Uh, please scan the QR code and tell us what you think about this talk. And also let me know if you have any feedbacks about the exhibition. I hope to hear more from our visitors, from our docents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs>